And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. Bob the Tomato, unable to sneeze, visits the sneeze doctor. Please, can someone help me? I need to sneeze. Wait for the sneeze, doctor. Just take a seat. He'll be right with you. Sneeze if you have to. Sneeze if you need to. Don't hold it in. Just be sure that you cover your mouth with a tissue. I will assist you. Sneeze all your troubles away. Add up to 150 miles an hour. Interesting fact. The average sneeze travels at a rate of 100 miles an hour. In 2003, Dirk Evert of Grunholz, Germany, clocked in at 150. Way to go, Dirk. Danke. I think I have a remedy. Perhaps <laughs> in my potpourri. I bought it from a merchant in Spain. For ultimate sneeze <laughs> satisfaction, <laughs> try allergic reaction. Take a deep breath. If it helps, you can squint at the sun. <laughs> or here's some pepper. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can try this feather. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> Set it free. <laughs> Let it go. 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 Go, 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 go! Interesting fact. The photic sneeze reflex, or sneezing when exposed to bright light, is a genetic trait found in 25% of the population, including Dirk. Gesundheit, which interestingly means good health in German. Yeah. Sneeze if you have to. Sneeze if you need to. Please apologize. Accidentally sneeze on your neighbor. Oh, hey, the glitter. Offer them coffee. Oh, hey, the been silly songs with Fanny. Tune in next time to hear Dirk say, Ich bin ein Schneezer. Yours too. Is it a cheap? A Subaru. I like your tires. You've got nice chrome. A trailer hitch. Left mine at home. Oh, your suspension, it suspends me over heights I've never known. And your roll bar is to die for, by the way. I like your chrome. You already said that. Did I? Yeah. Oh. Oh, you and me. In our sport utility vehicles, cruising to 7 Eleven for a bag of Frito Lays. Oh, you and me. In our sport utility vehicles, we'll slam into four wheel drive and pick up a dozen eggs. And if there ever was a snow, you know, a really, really deep snow. And if everyone was stuck but us, we'd be the ones not stuck. Then we could be the heroes. Oh, we could be the heroes. Yeah, we would be the heroes. Who would push them and pull them? Push them and pull them. Push them and pull them right out of the snow. I like your car. I like yours, too. Periwinkle. It's baby blue. How's it handled? Like a dream. How about coffee? And then ice cream. Oh, you and me. In our spark utility vehicles. Cruising to Dunkin' Donuts. For a cup of steam and joe. Oh, you and me. In our spark utility vehicles. We'll slam into four-wheel drive. For a scoop of rocky road. But 
one day, I'll go. And we find a ranger stuck in a ditch. A nice ranger in a deep ditch. Then we could be the hero. Oh, we could be the hero. Your car, I like yours too. Is it a Jeep? It's my sport utility vehicle. And now it's time for helpful humanitarian songs with Mr. Lunt. The part of the show where Mr. Lunt comes out and sings a helpful humanitarian song. Well, he's a mangy old pet. If you saw him, I bet you'd walk the other way. So sad and alone, with his hair overgrown, like a stinky old toupee. But doggies have feelings, and doggies need love, and doggies like those deep fried treats that come from up above. Oh, donuts for Penny, please give a glaze to make him smile. Thank you, ma'am, for troubled beast. Won't you at least comfort him a while? Sir, can you spare a donut for Benny? Please help my doggy friend. Thank you, kind sir. A honey dip would really help his broken oh, heart to no. mend. His broken heart to mend. Well, just look at this pup. <laughs> He's brightening up. Oh, he's looking not so weak. Oh, Benny, <laughs> his outlook was grim till you gave pastries to him. Oh, look, he wants to speak. Oh, doggies have feelings. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have any more donuts. No, 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 don't give him any more. They make him crazy. Like Jerry Lewis. No, no, no more donuts for the dog. Oh, man, this is a terrible idea. Stop it. No, 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 this has been Helpful Humanitarian Songs with Mr. Lunt. Tune in next time to hear Mr. Lunt say... Don't give donuts to dogs! Hi, kids. I'm Bob the Tomato. Welcome to Veggie Tales. Now, Larry won't be with us today. He's helping out some kids at a toy drive. He agreed to volunteer his time to help kids who normally don't have much, and I think that's great. God loves it when we help others. Now, Larry thought you might miss him, so he asked me to introduce you to his special friend. Hello, I am Lutfi, the kindly, teensy, wincy cucumber. Well, hi, Lutfi. Do you want to say hi to the kids? Oh, yes. Hello, children. I am friendly and I am kind. And I am teensy weensy. That's right. And since Larry's away, you're going to help with the show. Right, Lutfi? Oh, yes. Even though I am teensy weensy, I can be a great big helper. Well, let's get started. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, will you excuse me for a moment? Cover me, Lutfi. Um. Hello? 
was a silent movie. But powerful! How's he supposed to know what happened? He's on the phone! Oh, he did not think of that. Uh, look, Larry, uh, we're gonna have to try this again. Oh, hold on for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna go grab another story. With sound. I'm down to two quarters, Bob. I'm hurrying! Cover me, Lutfi. la 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 And now it's time for Schoolhouse Polka with Laddie, the popular show where Laddie comes out and sings a Schoolhouse Polka. Whether, 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 whether you like it or not. Whether, 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 whether it's cold or hot. Two, 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 my favorite toys. I'm bringing two, 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 a place the first one enjoys, and I'm bringing two. Mama Bones, Mama Bones, where the crews come. Socket. 
I'm a normal boy. A normal boy with a strange name. Me with winter school. You play? We went to church. No soccer balls in church. And he was kidnapped by pirates. Wait, that's not normal. If you were too normal, you would not have a holiday named after you. Good point. The pirates took Maywin to a country called Ireland. There he was sold as a slave and his name was changed. Slave bad, name change good. Hi, I'd like to request St. Patrick. Not yet. He was now called... Pig Boy! Feed the pigs, Pig Boy! Maywin's socket has a rather nice ring to it. Now this was the land of the druids, and the people there spoke a different language. But will they believe everyone spoke English? Like Star Trek. Even the pigs? No, not the pigs. Okay. The druids also did not know about God. They practiced a religion known as paganism. Paganism? Yes. Instead of praying to God, pagans pray to things like twigs. Oh, mighty twig, you are powerful and uh, twig-like. And pond scum. Oh, mighty pond scum, you are powerful and uh, scummy. And they painted with all the colors of the wind. And so it was that big boy Maywin Sukit went about serving his master, mopping his floors, feeding his pigs, and learning his language. Pig. Pig. Now Maywin was very far from home and very lonely. He remembered what he had learned in church about God loving him and always being with him. So Maywin began praying and talking to God. He prayed before bedtime. He prayed when he worked. He prayed when he ate. In fact, he prayed all the time. Why, in no time at all, he was praying over 100 times a day. That's a lot, but it's cool. Would you like to pray to me, Twig? No, I'm good. Maywin grew very close to God, and God took care of him and kept him safe. And one day, after Maywin had been in Ireland for six years, God told him it was time to go. Uh, all right. Later, pigs. Ah, pigs. walked and walked and walked. Two hundred miles before reaching the sea. Good day, Captain. My name's Maywin Socket. I was captured six years ago by pirates and sold into slavery. Since then, I've been feeding pigs and praying one hundred times a day. Can I have a lift? All right, then. The ship sailed for three days before reaching the coast. Then they set off on foot to the nearest town. But their directions were a little off. After 28 days of walking, their supplies had run out. The men were starving. Are you starving? I'm starving. I'm starving too. We're all going to die if we don't get something to eat. See me, Ewan. You said you pray a hundred times a day. How about praying for some food? Yeah, man. Yeah, come, come on. on up. Oh, uh, all right. Amen. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, that's miraculously delicious. Ah, uh, you know, Maywin, you really got something going there. Thanks a lot. Don't thank me, Captain. Thank God. All right, then. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Now, back home, the years passed by, and Maywin continued to grow closer to God. And one night, he had a dream. We beg of your holy oath that you should come and work again among us. Maywin dreamed that the people of Ireland were calling him back to come and tell them about God. Well, but 
You mind if I finish school first? I'm doing quite well. Ah, uh, no, no. Take your time. No rush. All right, then. So Maywin got his education, and because of his hard work and great love for God, he became a bishop. Which meant he had a lot of responsibilities in the church, and could help many people. It also meant that he got a new name. Patrick. Saint Patrick? Uh, the Saint part comes a little bit later. All right, then. And Patrick made his way back to Ireland. Back to the place where he had been taken by pirates and sold as a slave many years before. Back he went to tell the people about God. So you see, God is like a shamrock. Oh, great shamrock. You are powerful. No, 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 no. This is simply a metaphor. Oh, great metaphor. No, 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 no. God is like a shamrock because he is three persons in one. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. One God, three persons. Oh, we are so So, are there any ways that God is saying, like a no, none that come to mind. Oh, all right, just asking. And so it was that through Patrick, the people of Ireland turned to God. And God blessed Patrick as Patrick blessed the people of Ireland. He lived a good, long life among the people he loved so much and had been called to serve. On March 17th, in the year 416, Patrick died at the age of 73. And his name was changed one last time. This time to Saint Patrick. And that is why every year on March 17th, people all over wear a little green, the color of Ireland, and celebrate Saint Patrick's Day. A great man who loved Ireland and who loved God. The end. Alrighty, I found the film. Uh, Larry, are you still with us, buddy? Yeah, I'm still here. But did you hear that story about Saint Patrick? That was really cool. I uh, know, I didn't catch it. But I did find the story about perseverance. It took a little to find some, no? <laughs> oh, that is a good one. One quarter, Bob. That's all I got. All right, buddy. Hang on. Roll film!
time a spring roll. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, Wait, that's no clown. <laughs> yeah, it's his yeah, sparring yeah. partner, the Italian <laughs> Scallion. <laughs> Italian Scallion? He's a cucumber. How do you get a name like Italian Scallion? You never heard how that got started? Story goes, he was raised by an onion family known as the Scallions. Hey! He never realized he was different and grew up thinking he was a Scallion. Ah. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Sure it does. Plus, scallion only rhymes with like five words, and Italian is the catchiest. No, I, I mean the silk screen. The silk screen is a theatrical device used to make exposition more visually interesting. It's avant-garde. Oh, it's food. That's good. Quit laughing, Poe. You're supposed to be sparring with that joker. Hey, Mike. Have any recycling today? Hey, help yourself. Poe. Look at that jibba jabba. Oh, that's fun. Get back. Might as well call Workman's Comp. It's thrown out again. Now that's a haiku! Haiku. Three unrhymed lines of five, seven, and five syllables. Haiku. What are you doing, Scallion? You're supposed to help Poe train, not give him a sprain. Sorry. I was just joking around. Joking sumo, I a lot of quips and wise cracks. Who throws his custard pies back? Where whoopee cushions lie? My shenanigans are long through every end. Thick ranging, and to your humor's changing, I sing my silly song. I sing my silly your problem. You're always joking around. Look at you. You said you wanted to be a sumo, but the minute it got hard, you gave up. You got no guts, kid. Well, no gut. You're skinny. You could have had seconds, even thirds at the dinner table. You could have been big. You never finish anything, unless it's a punchline. Not finish anything. Name one thing I didn't finish. Yo, Scallion, did you finish and see my bike yet? I need it for my paper route. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, you don't want a list? Oh, a pity to me. What do you mean, Potato is hurt? Who did it? Ah, uh, it was an accident. Champion song, now who will you wrestle for the championship and the prize that goes with it? Bike. I want the championship. I don't care about the prize. <gasps> I won't have to finish fixing Hadrian's bike if I can have that one. Hey, I'll take it. You wrestle Apollo for the championship? Wrestle Apollo? I was talking about the bike. Hmm, how about this haiku? In the year of the scallion, how about a boat with the Italian scallion? Closer. The champ's only off by two syllables. No, 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 forget it. Apollo's way out of Scallion's league. Hey, I knocked Potato out of the ring. He slipped on a banana peel. Well, it was my fault anyway. I owe it to Poe. Tell him I'll take his place. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to take his place? <laughs> 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 
Come here, scallion! You're a hoot! That's the funniest joke I've ever heard! The Italian scallion in a ring with a Apollo guard! Because you want a bite? Oh, yeah, don't get wrong, guys! Eight seconds in the ring with the Apollo! Oh. No, really! I accept the challenge! What could be so hard about staying in the ring for eight seconds? I've got jokes with punchlines longer than that! He's accepted the challenge from the attack. They say he's a quitter, he better get fitter. A scallion will surely succumb. My gun, so tame your expressions of me. On this subject, be pray you'll be mum. You'll find there aren't many who fight for a penny despite with a rather large sum. Some, some. A very good bargain indeed. On this subject, we pray you'll be mum. mum, mum. Despite with a rather large sum. Some, some. You'll find there are not many, not many, not many who fight for a penny. It's a very Bargain indeed, it's a very good doctor you'll need. As you can see, a good bargain indeed. As you can see, a good doctor you'll need. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Kid, why are you doing this? I owe it to Poe. And I need that bike. I owe that to Hadrian. But Apollo's the champ. <laughs> no one's ever stayed in the ring with him longer than eight seconds. There's always a first time. But you only have two weeks to train. How do you expect to stick to it and see it through to the end? You could help me. You could be my trainer. Me? Oh, you know, kid, in a funny kind of way, you remind me of myself when I was your age. Okay, I'll do it. But you gotta promise to do everything I say, no matter how ridiculous it seems at the time. You gotta stick with it and not give up. Okay. I promise. hi -ya! Big Sweden Soils! Big Sweden Soils! This is training? I'm mopping the floor! It's an agility drill! hi -ya! Love your recycling drill, Mikey. It teaches the most important thing any wrestler should have. A keen sense of health. Scallion is a pushover. I could beat him in my sleep. Oh, what training he says he'll do none, none, none. Big Scallion's a quitter, he won't get much fitter. In seconds, the match will be done, done, done. Stay tuned, this is just getting fun, 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 so much fun! Hi-ya! What's the matter, kid? Training is tough. I want to show you something. Who's that clown? Me, when I was your age. They called me Mr. Juicy. Yeah, I goofed around like you. I never took anything seriously. But I learned you can change. The key is sticking it out to the end, even when it's hard. That's perseverance. I learned that working hard and finishing well can be very rewarding. Is that you? Yep, Alexander the Grape, Grand Sumo Champion, three years running! <laughs> Before my knee injury, of course. Look, Scallion, 
Sometimes there's a good reason to stop and quit. But not just because it's too hard. God asks us to do lots of things that are hard, but they're good things, and they make us better people. Most things worth having take hard work. Perseverance, Scallion. Perseverance. That's the problem, Mikey. I don't got what it takes. Maybe that's the reason I'm always clowning around. It's the only thing I'm any good at. I'm no good at training or wrestling or finishing. I'm only good at making with the jokes. I... I quit! Yo, Stallion! Yo, Hadrian. Why aren't you training? I don't know. Look, Hadrian, about the training, what's that thing on your head? Oh, I made it for show and tell. It's a scallion headpiece, like you wear. It felt great to finish it and show everyone, you know? No, I don't. I never finished any of my show and tell projects. Was it hard? Yeah, but then I figured if you could stick to something, so could I. You figured that? Mm-hmm. A sumo can't go wrong when he keeps on keeping on. Put up a fight for what is right. Don't quit until you're done. Until that final bell. God loves it when we finish well. So don't stop.
sing Hi-ya! The plaza net blooms in my heart As I merrily dance and I sing Hi-ya! I welcome the hope that it brings Hi-ya! A finishing thing that I start A finishing thing that I start And that's what he means when he says finishing He's welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring Hi-ya! 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 So cool. When I heard the busy signal, I thought you'd given up. Nope. I got right back on the subway, got up at the 81 bus, took that to the 49, grabbed a burrito, got on the 92, hopped three more blocks, and I was there. Wow. Sounds complicated. But worth it. Well, what do you say we talk about what we learned today? And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And Bob has a lot to say in his book. Luffy, what did you do? Luffy feeds into tiny places. You killed Quirty. Oh, no, I did not kill him. I just made him sputter and smoke, and there is a difference. Well, we're going to have to get him repaired, and we need a verse now. What are we going to do? Luffy might be teensy weensy but he is a great big emperor who knows his scripture memory verses. Memory verses? Oh, yes. You see, we know that God's word is for everyone. <laughs> Take a look. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. Hebrews 10.36 Wow! You're one smart teensy weensy cucumber. You see, Larry, God wants us to persevere, to keep on keeping on. Even when it's hard, right, Bob? Especially then. That's when we need to decide to be a finisher. When we're trying to do something we know God would want us to do, He cares whether we finish or not. God promises that finishing has its rewards. Hiya! Well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. Remember, God made you special. And He loves you very much. This is wonderful. So, what are we doing for our next show? Bye! Guys? Guys? Fellows? And now it's time for The Blues with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings the blues. Hey, everybody. I'm gonna lay down some blues. All sunshine and roses. No rain came my way. I said, all sunshine and roses. No rain came my way. Mm -mm. My dad bought me ice cream. Oh, happy, 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 happy day. Mm -hmm. I ate up that ice cream. Got some on my face. That's right, right on my face. I said, I ate up that ice cream. Got some on. Happy, sticky, happy, 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 happy place. 
man. What you doing? I'm singing the blues. Oh, man. The blues is for singing when you feel sad. But I don't feel sad. Man, you got no business singing the blues. Here, let me help you out. Take this. <gasps> cool, ice cream. Thanks. Now give me back that ice cream. You took my ice cream. You took it from me. You took my ice cream. You took it away from me. Oh, yeah. Now you're getting it. Now listen up. But I'm still not sad. I'll just have a cookie. No, 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 man. You almost had it. Come on, like this. You took away my ice cream. You took it away from me. My sweet, creamy ice cream. I don't care about no cookie. <laughs> now try it again. My cookies and ice cream, they both gone away. That's right. Mm -hmm. Feel it. My cookies and ice cream, they both gone away. Oh, sweet, man. Sweet. But that don't bother me none. I got me my freshly baked strudel. What? Strudel? Man, you can't say strudel in the blues. That don't even rhyme. Well, what about poodle? Cause I got a poodle. Ha! Oh no, don't tell me you're gonna eat that poodle. No, I'm just gonna pet him. Petting poodles makes me happy. <laughs> Sorry, man. You way too happy to sing the blues. Hello. Would you like to polka? Sure. Don't got no ice cream, no cookies, no strudel. Don't got no ice cream, no cookies, no strudel. But I'm your lady, your lady, your lady happy. Just here with my poodle. That's right. Oh yeah, I'm your lady, your lady, your lady happy. Just me and my poodle. This has been the Blues with Let. Tune in next time to. Oh, never mind. Larry's not likely to be singing the blues again anytime soon. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Larry Boy, the part of the show where Larry Boy comes out and sings a silly song. We join the league at supper time as they sit down for a meal prepared by Alfred. I don't want to eat my Brussels sprout. He doesn't want to eat his Brussels sprout. And I really, really don't like sauerkraut. Icky, slimy, stinky sauerkraut. My appetite is zero. No need to shed a tear roll. You need a supper hero. Uh, what's a supper hero? Got diddles you don't want to chew. Yeah, not too appetizing. Don't want to eat what's cooked for you. No, not really. Then, citizen, don't fear, oh, I am the supper hero. He is the supper hero. Yummy, 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 Thanks. I like this supper hero. This pasta dish has gotten cold. I beg your pardon? This fish stick looks a little old. It's not that old. You can't go on, I must insist. It's my duty to assist. Well, I'm kind of hungry. Good citizen, don't fear, oh. I am the supper hero. He is the supper hero. Yum, 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 I was gonna eat that. Don't worry, folks, for me it's fun. A supper hero's job's not done. Yummy, 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 yum, yum, yum. Till every supper plate is clean, no matter what type of cuisine. Yummy, 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 yum, yum, yum. Who let him in? Hey, is that chocolate? I love chocolate. Oh, wait! Yummy, 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 yum. Yummy, 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 yum, yum. Ah, good citizens, don't fear, oh, and be of good cheer, oh. I love my new career, oh. I am the supper hero. Dude, he ate our cake. So, what do you say, guys? Can I join the league? 
This has been Silly Songs with Larry Boy. Tune in next time to hear the league say... No. no. Yummy, 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 yum. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Yep. Today we got a letter from Cody Gordon in Evergreen, Colorado. Hiya, Colorado Cody. Now Cody just became a big sister a few weeks ago. Cool. Congratulations. She says that she likes her new baby brother and all, but sometimes she gets angry because nobody pays attention to her anymore. Hmm. Also, she says her mom is always asking her to help with the baby, and she can't play as much as she used to. Oh, yeah. That's rough. Yep. Cody says her mom wants her to show love to her brother, but she's not sure how, or even why. Wow. You know, Cody, this reminds me of my little brother, Steve the Cucumber. You have a brother? Actually, I have three brothers. Steve the Cucumber, Mark the Cucumber, and Bob the Cucumber. Bob's the oldest. You never told me you had brothers. I'm sure I must have. I would have remembered. Bob the Cucumber? I would have remembered if you had a brother named Bob. Oh, well, sorry. I guess I never thought about it when I was around you. I've known you for ten years. Has it been that long? Anyway, Cody, I used to feel the same way about my brother, Steve the Cucumber, when he was born. And my mom had a story or two she would tell me when I was feeling that way. What do they look like? My brothers? Like cucumbers. So, Cody, check this out. I hope it helps. Three brothers. You think you know a guy. What? <laughs> to watch it. Miriam do this, Miriam do that. You're the big sister. <laughs> the Egyptians swim all Hebrews out of the water. Private princes swim by order of the Pharaoh. Everybody out. Where have you been? I asked you to help me today. Hey, Squirt, you're in trouble. Don't call me Squirt. Miriam, you've got a lot of responsibilities now that you're a big sister. You have more to think about than just yourself. Now please go get your... baby brother. Well, come on. Everyone wants to meet you. Isn't the baby adorable? The baby's adorable. Such a strong looking baby. Takes after she my side of the, the family. Baby. I don't know that I see such a baby as this. Why is everyone saying the baby? Can't they just say he? <laughs> Miriam, I want you to help feed the baby. Do I have to? You'll be taking care of the baby while we're working, so it's never too early to learn. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, sweetheart. That's just what babies do. All right. Happy's over. Time to get back to work. Bowie back to the brickyards. Quick, quick. Walk like an Oh, isn't that sweet? Another baby's been born. Oh, another baby. Let me guess. Another baby girl? <laughs> oh, the girl it is. Hmm. All right, let's go. 
Jersey Brickyard! Jersey Brickyard! We saw all of you! You know, statistically speaking, you'd expect to see a baby boy or two. No matter what, you can't let the guards find out that he's a boy. But why? Miriam, please. This is the most important thing you'll ever do. The Pharaoh's guards must never find out. I'll explain later. That's a good girl. What is it, Miriam? Mom, it's just that you never have time for me anymore. Miriam, I would love to stay home with you and the baby, but I can't. Now take care of yourself and the baby until we get back tonight. Here you go, little baby. Catch the ball. I used to get all the attention till you came along. What good are you? Ugh, not again. What can a baby do? What can a baby do? You puny pip, you can't do zip but lay around and <laughs> Too small to walk, can't even talk. Oh, please learn something. I'd like a pet, but what I get is not a dog, but you! You sit and drool, oh so not cool, what's all the hoop to do? What can a baby do? Oh, what can a baby do? I can't have fun, cause I'm the one who's stuck all day with... Aha! You cannot hide anything from us! Here, I was just changing the baby's diaper. <laughs> Back to sleep, sweetheart. Everything's fine. I worked so hard today. Oh, I know you did, and thank you. But this is what you have to do for the family now. I liked it better when I was the baby. Well, now you're the big sister. And being a family means taking care of each other. Mom, do you still love me, too? <laughs> of course, sweetheart. Nothing has changed. Just like we still had enough love for your big brother, Aaron, after you came along. That's different. Not at all. Now get some sleep. Tomorrow's another big day. You watch the baby again for me, won't you? Mm, I'll do it for you, Mom. That's my girl. Then the Papa Sphinx said, Who's been eating my hummus? <laughs> Hey, Squirt, you missed a spot. Stop calling me Squirt! Princess coming through! Make way for the princess! Yeah, I'm okay. Now, get out of here before there's trouble. Ooh, who did that? Uh, it was my fault. Double duty at the brickyards. No one stands in the way of the princess. Let's go. Aaron, why did you do that? Along with you. Along with you now. It's getting more dangerous. It's not safe for the baby anymore. Why? What are they doing? It's time she knew, dear. The Pharaoh's afraid of us. There are so many Hebrews in Egypt now that he's afraid we might take over the country. So now, they are taking away all the baby boys. That's why we've asked you to watch out for the baby. The same way Aaron watched out for me? But this is silly. They're just babies. We know, sweetheart. That's what we pray for every night. We can't keep the baby here anymore. It's just not safe. But where else can we hide him? 
It's got to be somewhere the Pharaoh's guards would never look. I think I know a place. All right, little guy. We've got to be very quiet. Egyptian swam. All Hebrews out of the water. <laughs> totally keeping him. I'm gonna call him like Moses because we drew him up out of the water. So how do you like take care of one of these things? Whoa. Uh, excuse me, princess? Yeah, huh? If it pleases your majesty, I think I could find someone to take care of this baby. Moses? Excellent! Bring him back when he can like walk and stuff. And if any of you are ever like harsh to him, I'll have your heads. I'm not sure how that would work. And the princess said you could stay home and take care of him. You don't have to work in the brickyards anymore. God answered our prayers. Our little Moses is safe. Miriam, we are so proud of you. I just love my little brother, is all. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's time for The Blues with Larry, the part of the show where Larry comes out and sings the blues. Hey, everybody. I'm gonna lay down some blues. All sunshine and roses. No rain came my way. I said, all sunshine and roses. No rain came my way. Mm -mm. My dad bought me ice cream Oh, happy, 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 happy day I ate up that ice cream Got some on my face That's right, right on my face I said, I ate up that ice cream What you doing? I'm singing the blues. Oh man, the blues is for singing when you feel sad. But I don't feel sad. And you got no business singing the blues. Here, let me help you out. Take this. <gasps> cool, ice cream. Thanks. Now give me back that ice cream. You took my ice cream. You took it from me. You took my ice cream. You took it away from me. Oh, yeah. Now you're getting it. Now listen up. But I'm still not sad. I'll just have a cookie. No, 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 man. You almost had it. Come on, like this. You took away my ice cream. Now try it again. My cookies and ice cream, they both gone away. That's right. Mm -hmm. Feel it. 
my cookies and ice cream. They both gone away. Oh, sweet, man. Sweet. But that don't bother me none. I got me my freshly baked strudel. What? Strudel? Man, I guess it's cool in the blues. I don't even cry. Well, what about poodle? Because I got a poodle. Oh, no, don't tell me you're going to eat that poodle. No. Way too happy to sing the blues. Hello. Would you like to poker? Sure. Don't got no ice cream, no cookies, no strudel. Don't got no ice cream, no cookies, no strudel. But I'm your lady, your lady, your lady happy too. Just here with my poodle. That's right. Oh yeah, I'm your lady, your lady, your lady happy too. Just me and my poodle. This has been the Blues with Let. Tune in next time to... Oh, never mind. Larry's not likely to be singing the blues again anytime soon. Right. Hear ye, hear ye. 
Otis the Elevated will be taking all comers in the annual jousting tournament, if any of you are up for the challenge, which I know you are. Thank you, Novak. Remember, lads, this is the training that could save your life when facing a Rubarbarian. Watch out for yourself. There's not a nice one among them. Soup's ready. It's water soup. <laughs> Again. Mm -hmm. With water sauce. <laughs> sweet, sweet, Petunia. You have been so kind to me all these years. And you to me, Mother. In law? Yes, I know. But you've been just like a mother to me, Nona. What if it isn't the Rue Barbarian? Go back to your own kingdom, Rue Barbarian! Nona, I don't really seem to fit in since our arrival here in Scone. We've become very poor, and everyone is rather mean to me here. Sweet, sweet, Petunia, could you get that apple for me? Of course. Hey, it's that new surf music. Lucas, why are we taking this path back home? We don't have to check on my orchards. Harvest was last week. I told you this morning, sire. Uh, Nona has moved back to town, and she wanted you to stop by. Nona? My second cousin? Yeah, twice removed. Oh, look, uh, there she is now. Wow, Nona sure has changed. Uh, sire, Nona is the short one. Oh, well then, who's the tall, kind one? And that would be Petunia. Uh, but, sire, I advise you not to have anything to do with her. After all, she is a Rhubarbarian. Oh, pish pass, Lucas. The war is old news. Look how kind she is. Why, Duke Duke, what a surprise. Why, hello, Nona. It's good to see you. By the way, have I introduced you to sweet, sweet Petunia? She has been caring for me since our return. Oh, Duke Duke. Nona has told me so much about you. Uh, soup? Well, there's not much, but we will gladly share it with you. Why, thank you. Oh, no. Oh. I'll, I'll get it. it. Oh. oh. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, excuse no, I'm, me. I I'm such an oaf. L let me make it up to you. What do you need, my lady? Anything at all? Oh, nothing really, sire. Yes, especially since we live in the tree stump with no food to speak of. We don't need anything. Nothing at all. Sire, love and war. Remember the war? Nonsense. The least I can do is let you gather leftover apples from my orchards here. You can take whatever you like. Oh, I thank you. You really are too kind, Duke Duke. Oh, no need for formality. You can call me Duke. <laughs> oh, bye, Duke Duke. I mean, Duke. <laughs> Bye-bye, sweet, sweet Petunia. Uh, sire, you are getting rather friendly with that foreign girl. Uh, you know how the citizens of Scone are toward anyone being friendly to a Rhubarbarian. Ah, Lucas, you're overreacting. No, that, that's nonsense. I'm sure that was just an accident. No, it wasn't! How many Rhubarbarians does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. How many Rhubarbarians... Uh, what's a light bulb? I don't know. But if I did, I'm sure it would not change my negative opinion of Rhubarbarians. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better go. Things will only get worse for you if you're seen with me. No, no, things will be fine. I'll be... Oh, oh are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Oh, you dropped your hat. You know me. Oh, here you go. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Oh, are you oh, okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Missed the door. <laughs> Bye. I got my hat now. <laughs>
<laughs> she is somewhat clumsy for a princess, no? What? Petunia is a princess? But it goes. Excuse me, Nona. I don't mean to pry, but if Petunia is a princess, why are you two so poor? It's complicated. I'll explain later. Um, it kind of is later. Oui. Let's go to the book. Page! It all started before the Great Pie War. As you know, I once had a husband. The brave and noble Gildersleeve the Invincible. And we had a son, Ryan, the only slightly less invincible. Oh, did I mention that my son, Ryan, noble citizen of Scone, married sweet, sweet Petunia, the princess of Rhubarb? What? Petunia's married? No, hold on to your horses. There's more. You see, when our son married the Rhubarbarian princess, we all went to live in Rhubarb. But before we left, Gildersleeve provided for his brother by giving him half of the golden crest. It was the key to his castle. Half? Why don't you just come out and say you don't trust me? All right, I don't trust you. The other half was the key to the great vault. This he kept for me. Then things got bad. The armies of Rhubarb went to war against the kingdom of Scone. The Great High War has begun. As you know, Gildersleeve and Ryan were neither invincible nor slightly less invincible. Wow, I never knew. But why didn't you stay in the kingdom of Rhubarb if Petunia was a princess? Page! Petunia's family welcomed her, but not me. To them, I was the enemy. But Petunia was so compassionate to me. She sacrificed living as a princess to come and take care of me. Wow, you're right. How's that? This is complicated. So, you're forced to live in a tree stump because of Gildersleeve's brother. He only looks out for himself. I'm so sorry. I wish there was something I could do to help you get the other half of that crest. Goodbye, Duke. Voila! <laughs> oh, Petunia! Sorry, Nona. I'll get dinner right away. How's apple fricassee? Fine, dear. But first, I have something for you. I want you to have this. You need it more than I do. But Nona, the key to the vault? Oh, this is too great a treasure. I... Can never repay me? Well, I think Duke will help you with that. Duke? Oh, what does Duke have to do with anything? You just give it to him and ask him to joust for you in the tournament. Give it to Duke? Trust me, dear. Oh! Oh, P Petunia, I didn't see you there. <laughs> Tell him you think he's nice. I? Nice? Oh. You sure are. Y you're really nice. You're one of the nicest people I know. Tell him. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Duke, uh, I think you're nice, too. You do? Well, I, uh, now, I... Now, the crest. What's this? I want you to joust for me at the tournament to win the other half of the crest from Gildersleeve's brother. What? The family. Mention the family. If... if Gildersleeve's brother won't look out for family, you must. Me? For you? Well, you're known as second cousin. Twice removed. Duke, I know this is a lot to ask, but I want... Ahem. Uh, I need you to joust for me. Well then, yes! Yes? Yes, of course I'll joust for you. I'd do anything for you, Petunia. Even if I had to joust Otis the Elevated. By the way, who is Gildersleeve's brother anyway? Otis the Elevated. Otis, I've come to challenge you to a joust. At joust, winner gets both halves of the duck. Both halves, huh? If you won't take care of family, I will. 
You think I got where I am by looking out for others? Looking out for others is for saps! <laughs> no, looking out for others is true love. <laughs> I've seen you train. You're on! <laughs> Ladies, lords, and peasants, we are gathered to witness a contest between Otis the Animated and Duke Duke. The winner gets the golden crest to Gildersleeve's castle with all the treasure that lies within. And if they act now, we'll include this lovely set of Ginsu knives. The contest shall consist of three tests worthy of a knight. First, the implausibly arduous obstacle course of peril. By right of elevation, Otis the Elevated shall go first. Next up, the Rubarbarian loving Duke Duke. Too good for Duke. And now, the hurling catapults of slime! To see who's the smartest, the Abbot of Costello will ask a riddle. The first to solve it sends his opponent into a bucket of slime. There are three members of the royal family with strange names. Sir Who, Prince What, and Lady I Don't Know. They want to board a ferry to cross a treacherous river. Taking into account their rank, what would be the reverse order in which they should board the ferry? Wait, you, you want to know who's on first? Correct. Next. What? Absolutely correct. And third? I don't know. Correct. Wait, who went third? Wrong. <laughs> Actually tied Otis. There will be a third contest: the joust with the pies of doom. A head-to-head -head competition to prove who is the best. You are going to lose everything. Sire, no one would blame you if you backed out now. After all, she is a Rhubarbarian. Go back to your own kingdom, Rhubarbarian! Think about it. Are you really willing to take a pie for Petunia? Lucas, she has no family to look out for her. I have to think of her first. 
For Petunia! For Beverly! For the duck! Close, folks. You are lucky, Duke. But watch out for yourself this time. No, Otis. I'm looking out for someone else first. That's true love. That's crazy. Take care of you forever. Family? Forever? I now pronounce you Duke and Duchess. You may now join the halves of the duck. Gold? Oh, excuse me. No, I I'll don't. get it. No, no. Al allow me. Oh, excuse me. I got it. Love, love, true, true love. The Holy Spirit in this name of when we enter the Wow, Larry. Those were great stories about loving your family. Thanks, Bob. Um, speaking of families, I've been feeling kind of bad that I never told you about mine. So, I gave my brothers a call so you can meet them. What? Come on in, guys. Bob, this is Bob, Steve, and Mark the Cucumbers. Uh, well, hi, guys. It's really great to meet you. Ah. Uh... Oh, uh, did I mention they're not much for talking? Uh, no, you didn't mention that. But they sure can sing. Well, that's nice. Okay, bros. We're over here by QWERTY to talk about what we learned today. Do -ya, da -da -do. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in His book. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was, uh, nice. Real nice. Bye, bros. They have to get back to the hardware store. The hardware store? Yep. I chose a life of show business. They chose a life of hardware. Uh, but they sing so nice. You should see them with the table saw. Uh-huh. Well, let's see if Cordy has a verse for us today. <laughs> Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Romans 12:10. Just like in the story of Miriam and Moses. Miriam learned to think first about what her little brother needed. She showed love to him by protecting him, even though it was hard. Yep, 
and in the story of the princess in the pie war, Duke, Sweet Petunia, and Nona all looked out for each other because each wanted the others to be happy. So you see, Cody, God gave us families to help each other. The very best way to show love to your new little brother is to think about him first, kind of like the way your mom looks out for you. That'll help him grow up to be a great brother, and you'll feel great because you helped. That's right, because true love always thinks of others first. Well, that's all the time we have for today, kids. Always remember, God made you special. And he loves you very much. Uh, uh, Bob, uh, I'll see you later. I gotta go do a video link with my dad. Y your dad? Yeah, he's an astronaut. He's in orbit, and I gotta wish him a happy birthday. See ya, kids. Larry, we gotta talk more. <laughs> Veggie Tales, Veggie Tales, Veggie Tales, Veggie Tales.